Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. The phone lines are open, so please feel free to call in with your questions. The number is 559-656-0317. You may call or text that number. If you'd like, you can email your insurance-related questions to questions at insurancehour.com. If you'd like to get some text updates, feel free to shoot us a text to 5674-CARL. That's 567-367-5275. Today, we are going to be spending the majority of the day going through listener emails. So I'm going to go through them. I will tell you up front, I have not previewed them. Uh, I'm not looking to try and do any advanced research prior to going through them with you. I'm going to read them to you as they are presented to me, give you my best response. Remember, if you feel that something you're hearing is not 100% what you're expecting, please do reach out and let me know so I can do some additional research. I do always do my best to try and give you the most up-to-date and accurate information that I can. Sometimes I don't get it right, so let's all learn together. Let's get started. First we have here, uh, and I should probably have made the font a little little larger now that I'm looking at it. I feel like I'm really squinting, so maybe at a break I'll adjust that. Let's get started. It says, hello, my name is Martha. I'm reaching out because I recently returned home from a weekend vacation to a flooded kitchen. The pipe under my sink must have burst while I was away and it absolutely drenched my cabinets, hardwood floors, and even spread to my dining area. It's such a mess and the contractor said there might be mold growing because it sat for so long. I've always been responsible with my maintenance, so I'm frustrated something like this could happen out of nowhere. Now I've got some questions piling up. Number one, would my homeowner's insurance cover water damage like this if it happened while I'm away? Now, there's a few questions that is that are being asked, so let me read her question, and then I'll give you my answer, and then we'll go to the next question. So again, her first question is, would my homeowner's insurance cover water damage like this if it happened while I was away? Now, terminology is always interesting because she started out by saying that there was a flood, that the, a pipe broke, and there was a flood of water. Flood damage is specific to a flood insurance policy. However, a pipe breaking typically is something that would be covered under most homeowners insurance policies. She's asking if it would be covered while she's away. Unfortunately, for some reason, these types of claims do happen when we're away. I, I don't know why. It just seems that the pipes know when we're not around and no one's going to be checking it. Uh, there are items you can get to prevent this type of substantial loss. There are water shutoff valves. And in the event that there is water that is continually going, then the system will detect that and shut your water off to prevent ex extensive loss from happening. There's three or four companies out there I'm aware of. They're uh, over the counter, buy them on Amazon. They're just literally called water shutoff valves. Let me get to the next question. She says, should I consider filing a claim or would it just lead to my premiums skyrocketing? Well, we've talked about claims and, and premium adjustments in previous shows. You can go back and check that out. If the claim is substantial enough that you need to file it, then absolutely file it. Do understand that this is going to be looked at as what it was, which is that there was damage caused by something, right? Were you not maintaining things or was the pipe just old? Whatever the case might be, you're going to be looked at differently having had a claim versus the same you that did not have a claim. My recommendation always is if the claims are small enough that they're not going to make a major impact for you, then it's usually best to handle it for yourself and keep all of your zero claim discounts and all that other good stuff. She also asks, if mold is starting to form, will insurance usually cover that kind of remediation or am I on my own? Most uh, insurance policies do cover some form of mold, right? They're going to give you a certain dollar amount. They typically will not cover an unlimited amount. So check your policy and look and see. You might find that mold is covered up to $5,000, $10,000, something along those lines. And her final question is, is there anything I should do right away to prevent further issues or can I trust the insurance company will step in? Well, 
I always tell people when there's a when there's a loss, you always want to do immediately what you can to prevent further loss while you're waiting for your claim to be adjusted, right? So if the pipe, if you get home and the pipe is leaking and there's water flowing, you don't want to sit there and wait for the insurance claim to be filed and wait for an adjuster and wait for all of that to happen while the water is just pouring in, right? So you want to do what a what a prudent person would do. You want to take whatever actions are are usual and normal to be sure that you're going to prevent further loss from happening. And that is the end of the questions for Martha. Water damage claims are tough. They are really, really tough. And older homes have, you usually were built with a crawl space, right? So people could actually crawl under the house. And that made it so much easier to update plumbing because someone could literally climb under the house and they would update the plumbing. There's usually two types of pipes that get replaced. There are the horizontal pipes, right, that run under your home, and then the vertical pipes that run from under your home up to your actual fixtures that are being used in the house. Sometimes they'll both be upgraded. Sometimes you'll find that, well, you think your house has been upgraded to say copper plumbing, but maybe they only did the horizontals, not the verticals or, or vice versa. So if you're looking to do work on your house, be sure that you differentiate between horizontal and vertical pipes. And if you're going to update, update them both because, right, it's the weakest link in the chain. If you update one of them and you leave old galvanized rusting away plumbing somewhere else, then that's probably where the leak's going to end up happening. I actually have a, a personal story on this. One of our family members was on vacation, of course, and got a phone call from their neighbor that there was water flowing out of their garage down the driveway. And of course, he uh, he rushed home and was able to turn the water off and, and deal with it. But it created an unbelievable amount of damage in an unbelievably short period of time. Water is challenging. Let me tell you, it is probably the number one or number two most filed type of claim. Incidentally, mold coverage back in the day used to be treated like any other coverage, right? They would pay what it was required and what was necessary to get it handled. There were no sublimits on it. However, because of the increase in those types of claims and the difficulty in predicting how much it's actually going to cost, because mold can be a little bit in one area, it could be a lot all over the place. It could require a lot more work. You'll notice that policies normally now will come with the option for you to select how much coverage you want to have for mold. So again, talk to your agent or broker, talk to the carrier, find out what options are available for you when it comes to how much they'll pay out in the event of mold damage. With that, let's take our first break. You are learning from Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman, and we will be back in 60 seconds. Thanks. Let's talk about earthquakes for a minute. Look, we know we live in earthquake country here in California. Powerful, devastating earthquakes have happened here before, and science says that they will happen again. They can't tell us exactly when. They can just tell us that it is going to happen. Count on it. Prepare for it. Did you know that earthquakes are not covered by your homeowner's insurance policy? You need a separate policy to give you the peace of mind that you will be able to recover without getting financially wiped out the next time we get hit with a big one. There is a great company here in California that will provide you with earthquake coverage you need at a price you can afford. That company is GeoVera. I have a policy through GeoVera. I really like how easy it is to choose from all of their great coverage options, backed by the financial strength that lets me know that they will be here for me when I need them the most. Go to getquake.com forward slash insurance hour to learn more. That's getquake.com slash insurance hour. Make sure you're ready for the day when the ground shakes again. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We are taking your insurance related questions, your stories, your emails, your voicemails, and we are trashing them. No, I'm just kidding. We are going to try and answer the questions you might have, give you an idea of what might be covered, what might not be covered, and how you should deal with your potential loss. Now, when we're answering questions about claims, remember, your policy will vary, not may vary, your policy will vary. So you wanna be sure that you are checking your policy provisions, talking with your agent or broker. The information I'm giving you is general and generic and may not specifically apply to your case. All right. Before the break, we talked uh, about a an email that came in about a water damage claim. Let's get to the next one. Here we go. Uh, hello, my name is Frank and I live in a nice older neighborhood. 
Uh, that, that's not too ominous. Well, it was nice until last week when I woke up to my neighbor's enormous oak tree crushing my detached garage. It's really frustrating because I just finished pulling some of the shelves and getting the garage organized. My neighbor and I usually get along fine, but he's been reluctant to take responsibility, claiming it's an quote unquote act of nature. I just need some clarity on where we are from here and what's fair. Okay. Uh, I will tell you that this is a relatively common, I don't know if I could say common, it happens with some level, some element of frequency. I mean, we, we, we do see claims like this. So let's get to the questions. First question, who should technically be responsible for the cost of repairs, my neighbor or my insurance? Well, let's keep in mind that insurance policies really are just an extension of you. So if your insurance policy is paying, that's just like you paying. You've basically been paying a policy that is going to take that financial responsibility. Same thing for your neighbor. Your neighbor paying or your neighbor's insurance company paying is the same thing. It's just your insurance company or their insurance company is, is an extension of you. It's why we carry insurance, right? You're not going to see where there's a situation typically where something would be paid for by the individual, but not the company. If there's negligence or there's some type of legal responsibility, disclaimer, not an attorney, then the insurance company would be paying where the individual that has the insurance policy typically would have individually. Next question, if this is not covered by insurance, would my policy handle it even though it's not my tree? I'm not quite sure what that is asking. Well, if the insurance company is going to pay for it, then the insurance company is going to pay for it. If not, then you're, you're going to want to obviously take care of, of the tree. Now, I think what we're getting to is, well, you know what, let me, let me not assume. Let's go to the next question and then we'll, we'll summarize if we don't get to the point I'm hoping for. Uh, next question. Oh, it's the last part of this. Do situations like this typically require a lawyer or should I expect it to be handled easily between insurance companies? It's a great question. And this is not specific just to this type of claim. Attorneys are very important and they're necessary sometimes in claim disputes. It just, it's, it happens. But you always want to try and handle things yourself with the insurance company and go to an attorney in the event that you're not able to get satisfaction with your claim. You want to take that process. You want to try and handle it yourself because that's the way insurance policies are typically designed for you to deal with the insurance company. They represent you in the event that you're not getting representation you feel is adequate or fair. That's when it's time to look for potentially getting some assistance from either a public adjuster or an attorney or, or some other um, third party. Now, let's talk about what this particular claim is. The question is, it's a neighbor's tree that fell on your garage, right? I mean, I'm distilling it down to its component part. What's going to happen is the insurance carriers are going to have to decide whether the tree was improperly maintained and that's why it fell, or was there a storm and it knocked the tree down? At the end of the day, somebody is going to need to cover the damage from the tree. And not being a claims adjuster by practice, we did have somebody on that talked about claims specifically on a previous show. If you're, if you're interested in a claim question and answer, go back and check for that. Uh, in this particular situation, I would file the claim with your insurance company, tell your neighbor to do the same, and I would let the insurance companies do the heavy lifting, no pun intended, with the tree that fell and decide which of them is going to take responsibility, pay the claim, and which one is not. This should not be something you lose a ton of sleep over. Don't fight with your neighbor about it. Let the carriers deal with it so you don't end up with uh, neighborly problems because the tree will get handled, but an angry neighbor or a bad relationship with a neighbor that goes on, that's the gift that keeps on giving. Let's go to the next question. Okay, hi, I'm Greg, and I recently found myself in a sticky situation while on a road trip in a rental car. I had been cautious the whole trip, but on my way back to return the car, I got into a minor fender bender. It wasn't my fault. The other driver rear-ended me at a red light, but the rental company is asking for my dam is asking me for damages since I didn't take out their insurance. I'm already paying for my own auto insurance and I'm feeling overwhelmed by the process of getting a rental company to back off. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here, but let's get to his questions first. First one, does my personal auto insurance cover incidents in rental cars or should I have taken the rental agency's coverage? Most insurance policies, and again, your mileage may vary, are going to cover you while you're in a temporary rental car. All right, now having said that, 
I will typically recommend that people get, depending on how long they're going to be in the car and if they're in a very unfamiliar area or just another city like they're used to driving, to get the insurance policy, the extra coverage from the rental car company. Not because I'm trying to make things just more expensive, but it just turns out to be a little bit easier in the event of claims to be able to just hand in the keys and walk away. Uh, the next question, should I file a claim through my insurance company or is there another option for dealing with the rental car company? From the sounds of things, you should file this claim with your insurance company like yesterday. Do not be stressing out. Do not be feeling pressured by the rental car company. Let the insurance company step in and handle it for you. And finally, would it be worth consulting with a lawyer if the rental car company keeps pushing? Again, uh, attorneys where you go when you're not able to get your insurance carrier to do what you feel you're entitled to. And at this stage, you haven't even filed the claim with your insurance carrier yet. So I would say before looking for any type of representation, the, fr the proper first step would be go ahead, file the claim with your insurance company and let them deal with the rental car agency. Now, just to uh, add a little bit of color to this, the rental car agencies will sometimes offer two types of coverage, liability and or physical damage. Liability is what's required to drive, right? That's protecting you in the event someone you're in an accident with gets hurt. Physical damage is just that. Maybe a rock hits the window while you're driving or you, you scrape the car in a tight parking lot or something like that. So rental car companies will typically ask for you to purchase one of those types of coverage or both. And you have to decide. Like I said, I like to look at it where if you're a city person and you're going to another city, okay. If you're a city person, you're going out to the country and you're going to be on lots of dirt roads and back roads, maybe you're not familiar with that. Maybe it makes more sense to look to buy the physical damage coverage since you might be more likely to damage that car, right? And on that note, I can't believe we are up against the commercial break again. You're learning from Insurance Hour. I'm your host, Carl Sussman, and we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Greg. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. The telephone lines are open, as they say. Please give us a call, 559-656-0317. That's the number to call to have your insurance-related questions answered. Remember, insurance-related. I'm not going to be able to help you out with what is the meaning of life. And I have actually had somebody call. I think they're being funny. But try and keep the questions insurance-related. That is what I know the best, right? You could also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. That's what we're doing today. We're going through your emails. Unless someone calls in while we're talking, I'll interrupt and we'll jump right into your call as well. If you call and you're not getting a person, you're getting a voicemail, just leave a voicemail, leave your question. I'll answer that on the next show. Got it? Let's get right back to it. All right, next email says, Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm calling because of an unfortunate incident with my dog, Bruno. <laughs> Bruno! I can't really, is that really his name? Okay. He's usually very gentle, but last week he bit a delivery driver who came up too close too fast. I feel really terrible about it. And I've apologized, but now I'm worried there could be a lawsuit or medical bills coming my way. I don't know much about how liability works. Liability, right? Question mark. These cases could be really hard. I need some help. Okay. First, I will tell you, I am a dog lover. Uh, I've also been, uh, I've had the unfortunate uh, experience of having a random dog bite me. So I can, I can speak from personal experience and from just being a dog lover. Um, first of all, be aware there's no such thing as, well, the person came up too quick, too close, therefore it's the person's fault. 
I mean, I suppose there could be some element of that. But for the most part, if an animal under your that, that you own hurts somebody, it's going to be on you, right? It's going to be your responsibility. So let's get to your questions. Will my homeowner's insurance cover any medical bills or potential legal fees? The answer typically is yes. Now, homeowners policy, homeowners insurance policies do have liability insurance. And unless you have an exclusion for animal liability, then you should be able to have your insurance policy, your homeowner's insurance policy, kick in to and help you out in this situation. Now, it's not just homeowner's insurance. Condominium owner's policies will have this provision, as well as renter's insurance policies. They'll all have animal liability unless, again, it's specifically excluded. And it's important to look into this because I, I think we've answered some questions earlier where people are looking to get homeowner's insurance and they're rejected because they have an animal that has a previous biting history or they have a, a typically, I'm making air quotes, aggressive breed of dog. And I hate that, but that's a, it's, it's just a statistical fact. Some animals tend to be more aggressive than others. So yes, the answer is you should be able to work with your insurance company with this situation. Next question, should I reach out to an attorney or will that just make things more complicated? It's interesting how everyone is talking about attorneys today in these emails. Uh, an attorney is there if you need them, but I always recommend you start out with your insurance company. Insurance companies want to work with you. That's what they're there for. That's what you've been paying them for. Now, of course, people are going to hear that and say, oh, ha ha, they want to work with you. Look, you're paying premium for a product. The product is an insurance policy. If something happens and the insurance policy coverage is triggered, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get coverage based on the coverage that's in the contract with the insurance company, okay? So yes, I would say go right to your insurance company and let them take care, of, uh, let them get involved. Also do it sooner than later. Always better to have the carrier involved right away versus later on in the game. Next question she says is, is it better to report this to my insurance company now or should I wait to see if the other driver makes a claim? Uh, that's, that's interesting. Um, other driver. Oh, I, that's right. It was a, a, someone that was um, delivering. It was a driver. Okay. I, I, was, I knew we were talking about a dog bite and all of a sudden she's a driver. Now here's the situation. If, you, if this just happened and you have not heard from the driver, you may not need to file a claim because there, there's nothing to file. There's an incident but I don't know necessarily, and again, every policy might be a little bit different if you would want to file an incident report or not. Typically, I would say in general, unless you're put on notice that he's hurt or she's hurt and they're going to be going to the doctor or they're, they're, something is going to be coming of it, there's not much to report to your insurance company. Some carriers will give you the ability to file an incident report, some won't. I would say for the most part, generally speaking, stand by. If you're put on notice that there is a claim coming, that there's been damage, there's been loss, then yes, of course, you'll want to go right to your insurance company. All right, next question is, hello, I'm Mike, and I've been dealing with this roofing headache for a while now. A major hailstorm swept through our area a few months ago, well, months, and I think it left some serious dents on my roof. I didn't think much of it at first, but my roof seems to be leaking in multiple places. I've always kept up with my home repairs, so this is frustrating. I'm debating whether I should file a claim or just cover the repairs myself. Okay, I'm trying to be understand from what we have here. There was there was damage that was caused by hail, and now there's there's water damage, I guess, that's leaking. So the question he has is, would homeowners insurance cover hail damage if it's only now becoming noticeable? Ah, okay, that, that's the question. That's where I was sort of wondering why right now. Depending on what state you're in, some policies have specific coverage for different types of weather events. Um, hail and wind could be something that's separate. You would definitely want to file the claim immediately upon when you find out that there is this damage. Uh, next question, how would this kind of claim impact future premiums? Rewind, go back to an earlier question. We talked about this, and I think we talked about it in some extent to some detail on a previous show as well, how and why premiums can be affected by claims that are filed. And the next question is, uh, but the answer is maybe, likely yes. And the last part of the question, should I get a roofing inspection done on and on file before filing the claim? There's really no need. 
If you're going to be filing a claim, don't have the extra expense of having someone come out and appraise the roof or appraise the damages preemptively. The insurance company is going to do that anyway, and you'll probably want to have them pay for it. So people that will typically send out and have an inspection done up front, and then they'll want to get reimbursed for it later from the insurance company. When the insurance company is going to send out their own company or they're going to pay to have another company come out, it just creates problems. So my recommendation would be in your situation, you have damage by hail, you have potential damage by water, you've got a lot going on, you want to go ahead and immediately put this claim in and put it in right away. Now the carrier might decide, and again, it depends on what state you're in, whether this is something that you're going to have filed as one claim or two claims on one policy or two, one for the hail, one for the water damage. Again, your mileage may vary, so you're going to want to find that out. Talk to your agent, broker, or insurer and find out what the right way is to do that. We are at the halfway mark. Can you believe it? Let's take a quick break and we will be back with more of your questions. This is Insurance Hour. I'm Carl Sussman. Have you been dropped by your insurance agency or seen your premium skyrocket? Sussman Insurance is here to help. We are a family owned and operated insurance agency that's been serving our community for two generations. At Sussman Insurance, we know how stressful it can be to find the right coverage, especially when prices go up or you're left without insurance. That's why we're committed to finding you competitive rates, whether it's for fire, home, earthquake, flood, auto insurance, you name it, we've got you covered. Give us a call or send a text to 310-820-5200 or visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com. Plus, Stay updated on all things insurance by joining our text group. Just text 567-4CARL with a K. That's 567-367-5275 to get the latest updates straight to your phone. Sussman Insurance, your family's insurance solution. Hello, hello. You are learning from Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. The phone lines are open so we can take your insurance-related questions, comments, and complaints. Complaints are always fun. The phone number 559-656-0317. You can call or text that number or send us an email to questions at insurancehour.com. If you want to get on our text loop, go for it. Send a text to 5674-CARL. That's 567-367-5275. We are going through your questions today that have been emailed in. As I said previously, I'll say it again, I'm not a claims adjuster and policies are always going to vary. So I'm going to give you the best answer that I can, generically speaking. Your situation might be unique. Insurance policies are not commodities, they are different. So you wanna be sure that you read your policy or have an expert read your specific policy if you have questions and there's a claim involved. With that, let's get back to your emails. Hello, I'm Emily and I had a bit of an accident at my friend's place last week. I slipped on a wet spot in her kitchen and ended up spraining my ankle pretty badly. I don't want it to be a hassle, but the medical bills are piling up and I'm starting to wonder if there is any way her insurance might cover some of it. I'm just unsure about how to go about this without causing any issues with our friendship. This is a good one. This is a really good one. Let's see what her questions are and see if she hits on the stuff I want to make sure we cover. Would her homeowner's insurance potentially cover medical costs like this? Well, that's a great first question. And the answer typically is yes. Most homeowner's insurance policies have something called medical payments, right? This is not liability coverage, it's medical payments. It's typically a no fault insurance portion that will pay specifically for medical bills and medical bills only. It's not going to pay for lost lost wages. It's not going to pay for pain and suffering. It's going to literally just pay for medical bills. Now, there might be other losses, might be other issues. We'll get to that in a moment. But to answer your your question, medical bills, medical payments. And yes, most homeowners insurance policies come with it, comes in thousand dollar increments, depending on what your friend may have purchased. I think the minimum is a thousand, 5,000 is more typical. It just depends on what they have. Next part of her question, is it possible to make a claim without creating tension or is that just inevitable? All right, it can be tough. This is a friend. You don't want them to pay higher insurance premiums. You don't want to sue them. You don't want all that sort of thing to happen. You're doing the right thing. Start out with the medical payments 
And let's be sure that that will cover your bills. And final question, I can't believe it, is again, should I talk to a lawyer first or is that going overboard? I think you're doing everything right right now. You're looking out for your friendship. You're looking out for your wallet. Start out with medical payments. That is typically not something that is going to increase your friend's insurance premium, right? So if you have medical bills and their medical payment pays, then they should not see any increase in their medical their insurance premium. That's a big deal, right? That's going to enable you to not feel guilty and it shouldn't create tension because it's not coming out of her pocket or his pocket, your friend's pocket for with higher insurance premium. Now, if there is something more substantial that's happened and you're really hurt or the medical bills start getting significantly higher than what the medical payment limit is on your friend's policy, then you might need to roll that over into their liability coverage. Now, there might be the potential for a, a premium change for your, your friend at that point because liability is negligence, right? And the insurance carrier is going to look and see, well, you slipped and fell. What happened? Was there something that should have been done, could have been done to prevent that? Is there negligence? Was it just an accident? So it gets a little bit more complicated. So I would always say, if you can, start with medical payments, talk to your friend, and also find out, because it might be, it might turn out that, yeah, the medical payments are exhausted, but just by a little bit. And I say the most important thing in this situation is keep the line of communication open with your friend, okay? Let them know what's happening. You took the time to let me know. Let your friend know, and, and just talk it out. Talk it out. And at the end of the day, if you're not looking for pain and suffering, you're not looking for things of that nature, and you have health insurance, then your health insurance should be able to kick in to pay for your, your care as well. So lots of options there. Okay, next one, next question. Hi, I'm Dana, and my son who just got his license had a little run-in with a fence last weekend. Of course, I want to ask, did the fence run into him? Uh, thankfully, no one was hurt, but our car took some serious damage. This is his first accident, and he's shaken up about it. I'm not sure if we should even file a claim, especially if it will make our rates go up a lot. But I also don't want to pay out of pocket if we don't have to. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with you on all this. Let's get to the her. Let's get to her questions. Should I file a claim, or would this hurt his insurance rates down the road? If you file a claim on a new driver, there's on this type of a claim. This is called a solo negligent accident, right? The fence did not jump up and hit him. Uh, assuming no other strange situations occurred, he ran into the fence and he's a new driver. And the chances are the insurance company would look at that and say, well, new drivers are already high risk. And this, this driver has not only shown us why we, we charge more for new drivers, he's actually had a claim. He's had an accident. What if that were a car he ran into, not a fence? We could be looking at serious dollars and injuries and damages, right? So I would say, if it's possible at this stage, I would not look to file a claim because you're, you're already, you already have two strikes against you. You've got a new driver where you're already paying premium for that, significantly higher than the average driver, right? Because of lack of experience. And now your second strike would be, and they've already had an accident. So if it's something you can pay out of pocket, it's not going to break the bank, I would certainly do that and, and have the conversation with your son. So he realized to say, look, this would have cost money, I understand it was an accident. I know you're shaken up. Just take a deep breath. You're, you'll, you'll learn. But as far as the insurance policies go, if you can handle it on your own, you're probably going to be better off. Uh, next part of her question, do I need to worry about this affecting my own insurance premium? Well, if he's, oh, I see. You would, you would ask, would this affect his premium in the future? And now you're asking about your own. I'm assuming that he's covered under your auto insurance policy right now. So it would potentially impact your auto insurance premium now. And if, by some chance, you know, in the next you know, short year, couple of years, he ends up getting a policy on his own. Yeah, he's going to be paying for the fact that he has a solo negligent accident as well. And the last part, would it be smarter to set up a separate policy before moving forward? Uh, in the short time we have, I'll give you the quick answer. Insurance policies need to be in the name of the registered owner. And there are some other provisions that are important in there. So you can't just randomly yank a driver and a car, put them on their own policy and hope that things will stay separate. It doesn't work that way, especially if he's living in your house and you're supporting him. That's not really going to accomplish what I think you're trying to accomplish is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good thing we have a break coming up because my throat needs something to drink. 
You are learning from Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. I appreciate all the questions coming in. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we will go through more emails and more questions. We will be back in 60 seconds and we'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. You are learning from Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. Hey, if you missed any part of this show, we've been going through questions that you have been asking. Go back and, and, and find the beginning of the show because we've gone through a bunch of really good stuff. If you're not sure, just go ahead, uh, go online, search for Insurance Hour. You'll find the show on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Amazon, uh, you name it, we're, we're out there. Just search for Insurance Hour and you'll find the show. Find the show about questions and answers. Hey, listen to all of them. Not just that one, but this has been an especially informative show. Phone lines are open and at number 559-656-0317, you can call or text that number. Or, as many have done, send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. Let us jump right back into the questions. Here we go. Recently, someone broke into my backyard shed and took off with some pricey equipment I use for landscaping, including a new lawnmower and a few power tools. I'm pretty shaken up, and I'm not sure if homeowner's insurance will cover these items stolen from an outbuilding like this. It's just frustrating that they targeted my shed instead of the house. Well, I don't know. Personally, I'd rather have someone break into my shed than my house where I'm living, but I, I digress. Question, would my homeowner's insurance cover stolen items from my shed? Okay, well, you're saying that you have some pricey equipment for landscaping. Now, that tells me that that might be your business. If you're using your equipment for business, then you would hopefully have a business policy that would cover your equipment. That's a side note. So let's assume you just have pricey equipment for your own landscaping. Now, your homeowner's insurance policy is going to cover things that are on your property. It doesn't have to necessarily just be inside of your house. Now, depending on if it's an attached structure or a detached structure, there might be some certain provisions in there. But in general, having things stolen is going to be something you would have covered under your homeowner's insurance policy. Now, I would expect there to be limits for things like power tools, landscaping equipment, lawnmowers, things of that nature. So your policy will have those specifics listed in it. But in general, uh, I get it. It's frustrating and a lot of money, but I, I can't help but say it again. Let them break into the shed and not the house where you're living, right? Stuff is just stuff. You do not want to have someone breaking into your house, especially when you're there. Next part of the question, is this worth to, is it worth it to file a claim for this or will I end up paying through the nose later? I get this. These are a lot of questions we're getting today about premiums and claims. And you have to decide. Remember, your policy has a deductible. So, for example, if you have a $1,000 deductible and maybe there's $2,000 to $3,000 worth of landscaping equipment stolen, you're you're only going to get potentially the $2,000. You're not going to get the full amount. So you need to decide if it makes sense to file the claim based on your own finances. It, now, theft claims are something that insurance companies rate based on, meaning if you you and your next door neighbor have the exact same risk, but your next door neighbor keeps getting his house broken into, uh, he's going to pay a higher premium than you will. So yes, if you put a claim in for a theft, the likelihood is you are going to see a different premium at your renewal. So that is something to keep in mind as well. And let's see. Last part, should I consider adding extra security measures and seeing if insurance will give me a discount? Woohoo! 
party, party. Yes, this is a good statement to make for anyone, anytime. The more you can do to make your situation less of a risk, the lower in premium you're going to pay. That's just a fact. That's just the way it works. So if you can do things to make it less likely that you're going to have a loss, you're going to either pay a generally lower premium or the same premium, but get a discount for that work you've done, therefore a lower premium anyway. So yes, by all means, do what you can. Find out what options are available to make it less likely to have somebody break in again. See if you if you guys in the area are doing neighborhood watch. I find that um, we we see we see a pretty significant difference when people have those signs up that say neighborhood watch. I don't know if there's actually people that are out there walking around watching, but I know that areas that have signs that say that it just it gives. Again, if you're if you're a crook and you're looking and you're scoping out a neighborhood and you see one that's full of signs that says we're watching you in essence, right? We have neighborhood watch. Then yeah, you know it's you might just pass on to the next neighborhood. So. That might be something to, in an inexpensive way, talk to your neighbors, see about forming some type of neighborhood watch as well. Next. Hello. Last week, I woke up to find my car had been spray painted, ouch, and keyed all over while I was parked in my own driveway. I'm usually careful about parking, but I didn't expect this to happen right outside my house. It's such a hassle to fix, and I don't even know if insurance will cover it without it costing me later. All right, before I get to his questions or her questions, they didn't say, I have to explain to some of those folk out there that might be wondering, what does it mean to have your car keyed? How many of you have a physical key? You know, the sharp piece with the little ridges on it? Not as many as used to be. Now we have a fob, right? The little thing, or we've got a flat um, NFC card, or we have all sorts of other ways to get in and out of our cars. But back in the day, back in the day, uh, everyone had a key and it was that sharp piece of metal or or whatever it was made out of. And people, when they were being jerks, would go to your car and they would drag it across the car and leave pretty nasty scratches. And that was called getting your car keyed. Can't believe I have to actually explain this, but yes, I, I think it's only fair because it, it doesn't make sense if you've never seen one of those keys. Um, it's expensive because you have to have the car basically repainted. And as you can imagine, having the car repainted is not always as uh, simple because you want the paint to match. So if one part gets painted, they might have to paint the rest of the car. It's a whole mess. Anyway, so would my auto insurance cover vandalism if it happened on my own property? Okay, this type of damage is going to be covered under your comprehensive form of coverage, which is basically physical damage to the vehicle while the vehicle is not in motion. Fire, theft, Having your car keyed, those are things that would fall under physical damage of the vehicle while it's not in motion. Next question, is it worth filing a claim? This is again up to you. Maybe you want to find out how much it's going to cost to repair it yourself before you make that decision. Remember, there is going to be a deductible that applies. Some states do not charge you or surcharge you, insurance carriers that is, in the event of comprehensive claims. That's something to keep in mind as well. Also ask your agent or broker to find out. And should I file a police report? You know, I hate to dissuade you from doing that because uh, it's it's good to let the neighborhood know and the, the police officers know where crime is occurring. I don't think you should expect there to be any resolution based on that, but it doesn't hurt. I think you can file those reports online in, in a couple of minutes anyway. So I'm going to go with a yes. File the report. More money might come into your local police station depending on the level of crime they're finding. So... It, it, it can't hurt to file that police report for you. Sad, but that's the way it goes. We're going on our final break, and when we come back, we'll answer some more questions. You're learning from Insurance Hour. For me, your host, Carl Sussman. We'll be right back. Are you feeling lost in the search for the right insurance? Making call after call, only to find no one willing to go that extra mile for you? At Sussman Insurance Agency, we understand that frustration, and we're here to change your experience. Where others see obstacles, we see opportunities. While many might shy away from jumping through hoops, at Sussman Insurance Agency, we are prepared to leap. Looking under every rock, exploring every avenue. That's not just what we do, it's who we are. Our dedicated team doesn't just offer policies, we provide solutions. Solutions born from persistence, expertise, and a genuine commitment to finding you the best coverage possible. We don't just meet expectations, we surpass them. If you're tired of hearing no or it's not possible, 
It's time to turn to a team that believes in yes, and let's make it happen. Don't settle for less. Reach out to Sussman Insurance Agency at 877-411-5200. Visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com or email sales at sussmaninsurance.com. Let's uncover the insurance solutions you deserve. Sussman Insurance Agency, going the extra mile every time. Hello, hello. You are learning from Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. The phone lines, they are still open, waiting for your calls. 559-656-0317. Call or text that number. Send your questions in, as many have, also by email, questions at insurancehour.com. If you want to get in our text group, go ahead and shoot us a text to 567 for carl That is 567-367-5275. We have been going through a lot of claim-related questions, actually, today. Um, it's, a good, it's a good show. I would say if you haven't heard all of it, jump online, search for Insurance Hour, or go to insurancehour.com. Find out the best way to get a replay of the show. You'll find it on uh, YouTube, Amazon, Apple Podcasts, pretty much everywhere. Wherever you go, there we are. Let's jump in for our final segment, see how many more questions we can get answered. This one from Tom. He says he recently attempted his first big, well, let me just read it. I'm summarizing as I'm reading. I recently attempted my first big home renovation project. Uh Uh-oh, I better sit up straight and get ready. Repainting and redoing the floors in my living room. I thought I was being really careful, but during the sanding process, some sparks must have flown and I ended up with a small fire. I managed to put it out before it spread too much, but now I have burn marks on the floor and smoke damage. It was my mistake. And I'm embarrassed to ask, but would homeowners insurance cover a fire I accidentally caused while working on the house? Renovation is tricky. And I'm one of those people to say, I'll be the first to admit it, I could do nothing. I mean, the joke about changing light bulbs, that's probably me. Um, As a matter of fact, we have those, um, what are the LED light bulbs? And I swear sometimes I have trouble even changing them. So can't personally relate to any home renovation. But to answer your question, yes. In this situation, the way you've described it, most homeowners insurance policies should give you coverage for this. Fire is fire is one of the older expressions, right? Now, if you did something intentionally, different story. This clearly was not intentional, so I don't think you should have too much trouble filing a claim and having some help. Uh, Next part, should I even consider filing a claim or will they just deny it because it's my own DIY project? No. The fact that you did it yourself accidentally should not preclude you from having coverage under this particular policy, okay? Uh, I would be surprised. And and normally I like to give a lot of maybe, maybe, maybes. But in this situation, again, if you accidentally caused smoke and fire damage to your home, then I would be surprised if you're having problems collecting uh, or not even collecting on having the claim covered in this situation. Uh, Would it make sense to consult the professional before moving forward with any more work to avoid issues like this? Well, this doesn't sound like an insurance question. He's asking, should I get someone else to do the work so I don't do it again? Maybe. That might make sense. The truth is, if it turns out that the damage that was caused was where you were working and the insurance company ends up um, paying for the claim, you might end up having the work completed by someone anyway. Do not expect the insurance company to pay you to do the work, uh, especially if it's you that caused the damage to begin with. Sorry. That's the way it goes. Next question. Uh, I'm Jason, and I'm really shaken up at the moment. Last weekend, I went out with friends, and when I came back to the parking lot, my car was gone. Wow. Uh, I had my whole life in there, my gym bag, laptop, and some work gear in the trunk. I filed a police report, but I don't have high hopes of getting any of it back. I was just wondering if my insurance will cover everything that was in the car or if I'm just out of luck. Wow. Very violating to have your car stolen, that's for sure. Let's go through his questions and hopefully he'll touch on everything I want to hit on. Does my auto insurance cover personal items that were in the car or is that just for the car itself? That's a great question. Your automobile insurance policy will just pay for the automobile. Now, there are certain additions you can put on your policy to, you know, for stereo equipment, things like that. But typically the stuff in your car would not be covered under your auto insurance policy. Your auto insurance policy pays for the car. Now, the stuff in the car could be paid for by a homeowner's insurance policy, a condominium owner's policy, or a renter's insurance policy. I I generically call them property insurance. There's a provision called personal property away from home, and that's where you would potentially look to get coverage 
for your items that were in the trunk for your personal belongings. Should I be expecting a long process to get a payout? And is there anything I can do to make it go faster? You know, uh, your car was stolen. You filed the police report. Chances are the insurance company is going to want to work on this as quickly as possible for you as well. They're likely going to be paying for a temporary car for you if you had the right coverage in the meantime. So they're going to be out of pocketing. They're going to want to be getting the claim settled as soon as they can as well. And of course, we have to have the lawyer question. Would I need a lawyer if my insurance starts pushing back on replacing some of the items? Again, the insurance policy, auto insurance policies don't pay for stuff in the car, which makes sense if you think about it, because if you and I are both insuring the same car and we're similar risks, how would the insurance company know what to charge premium wise if you carry your stuff around in your car and I don't? So car insurance policies are priced for cars, not for stuff that might be in the cars, right? So uh, I would say, again, as long as you have a renter's insurance policy or a condominium owner's or homeowner's insurance policy, then you potentially should be able to get coverage with personal property away from home. Now, something else with vehicles being stolen, sometimes they find the vehicles and the vehicles are pretty much totaled. They've been stripped of parts, They've had, uh, they're, they're, not, they're not salvageable, right? They're pretty much total losses. But I've heard situations where the stuff is still inside. It's pretty wild, but I've actually heard it at least twice, actually, maybe even three times. I, I feel like there's a third I can't think of, but is familiar because they're looking for the parts. Uh, they're not taking the cars typically and reselling them. They're taking the cars, they're stripping the parts and they're selling the parts. Harder to trace, I suppose, or I don't really know why. But the stuff they don't want, they, you know, unless it's something they can easily sell, they, they're going to leave it alone. So if your car is recovered, it's possible you might be able to get some of that stuff back. A laptop? Maybe not so much. But things that are more generic and, and uh, they might not be, have any real money or time selling, you might actually get that back. So hold out a little bit of hope. Some of it might actually come back. And speaking about hope, I hope you will join us again next week because we will be back with another show. This will finish today's show. I thank everybody for listening, for watching, however you tuned in. You have been learning from Insurance Hour. For me, your host, Carl Sussman. Take care. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. The show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.